I'm, I'm, I'm saying we, sh we should uh, highlight on the kind of threats that Boko Haram poses uh, for especially Nigeria's neighbors. We are looking at the neighbors to the north, Niger and Cameroon. Cameroon has seen quite a share of it. What, what role, how does it play on these neighbors? Uh, yeah, the, as I said, the line was breaking, but I, I, I think we're talking about the threat of Boko Haram uh, in the neighboring countries of Cameroon. Uh, if that is that, uh, it is a major threat because uh, you know the, the tactics of Boko Haram is to terrorize the population uh, so that uh, they can uh, run away and give them space to hold territory uh, and then uh, carry out the operations or cow them to join the Boko Haram uh, terror campaign. Uh, and we've seen uh, Cameroon increasingly being targeted since they joined uh, Nigeria uh, in, in France. Uh, a sub-regional strategy to deal with the Boko Haram insurgency. So uh, increasingly we are seeing their terror tactics being now uh, operated across the borders of Nigeria, uh, which is uh, in a confirmation uh, of the, the fact that the, the issue of Boko Haram is not only confined to Nigeria, but it is uh, a, a threat to the entire of region, especially for countries bordering with Nigeria. Ab 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 absolutely. And uh, y y y one of the reasons for the fact that th this threat is real is the porosity of our borders. And, and then you'd want to ask yourself why nothing has been done about it till now to the extent that the prime minister's wife in Cameroon could be kidnapped. What can we do uh, or what should we have done in dealing with the porosity of our border? Uh, yes, uh, I think that's a good point. The porosity of the borders then increase the vulnerability uh, of people living uh, around the border. And uh, I think what should have been done is to see a not right from the beginning when Boko Haram started their campaign, as we now see the government of Nigeria taking concrete action and engaging uh, the media and the Nigerians to fight against the Ebola outbreak. And we are seeing success because the government has really taken very positive steps in educating and sensitizing the Nigerian and also uh, supporting the, the, health, uh, the, the health workers in providing the necessary support. We didn't see the same happening when Boko Haram started their campaign. So I think that, that was, that was the, the, the first problem because when there's no uh, political commitment and there's no uh, military morale and dedication to defend the national territory and, and defend the, the population against the, terror, the terrorist attacks, then uh, it gives the, the, the Boko a room to operate and terrorize the population and even a lot of young men to support them uh, and, and then uh, uh, ransack villages so that uh, they can have free territory to operate. Uh, it's difficult. In, uh, which is uh, a very thick forest area. So, yeah, I think the it could have been for the Nigerian government to, to develop a very concrete military strategy to deal with the issue when it started. But now uh, they've waited until the Boko Haram uh, have uh, Boko Haram has gained a lot of uh, you know a lot of power in terms of accessing weapons. And in terms of even uh, holding grounds and, and committing terror, terror at will, so this is this is now uh, being the, the the major threat that is affecting other neighboring countries as well. In, in forming that strong military ground, there had been suggestions in the past that indeed Nigeria and its neighbours uh, should form a, a unit, a committee that will, could deal with. Uh, border issues besides providing the infrastructure to deal with the porosity. But I am not sure that I have heard of any uh, unity committee between Nigeria and, and its neighbors to deal with this. We, seems to, we seem to be dealing with it indi individually. Uh, whether they are sharing 
uh, intelligence or not. Well, they may not tell us, well, but until the 200 girls were kidnapped, we had nothing of that sort. Why does it seem so difficult to do a simple task as that? Uh, yeah, the line uh, keeps breaking. Yeah, but I, I think yeah, the, the, the cross-border joint patrol system that the country should have mounted uh, to, to make sure that they, they collaborate and, and coordinate the response mechanism to deal with the Boko Haram threat has not also been uh, forthcoming. Uh, as you said, uh, each country is trying to deal with the issue uh, individually on their own side of the border, even though at the political level, there has been an express commitment to, uh, to coordinate and cooperate in fighting against Boko Haram. But uh, in concrete terms, uh, on how this is implemented on the ground uh, has not been uh, materialized so far. Uh, so that is also uh, adding to uh, the difficulty in containing uh, the effectiveness of the Boko Haram terror campaign. Uh, and uh, it's important that the, yeah, the, the the, the military strategy is also uh, incorporated alongside the, you know, the community engagement because uh, the communities, if they are, uh, they are assured, uh, they're, in, they're motivated to cooperate uh, and provide intelligence information and guidance. They, they live in the area, they know uh, the, the food. That, that are frequently used by, by Boko Haram, so they can, that they can help in, in, but, in but identifying the hideout and also providing the information. Th that's, that is yes. where the danger lies, considering uh, we've, we've had reports of locals in Niger, locals in Cameroon, being members of the militants group, our inability to have a joint team to deal with them, then becomes uh, it, 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 some sort of a, a field that fans the fire of Boko Haram. We, we want to do that. We, we can't do that. Why can't we just come together and then form this unity, unity uh, committee, if you, if you, if you like? How dangerous is that? Yeah, because uh, it shows the lack of clear strategy uh, for the short term to make sure that the protection is for the people who are affected, and also a long term a lack of strategy uh, in terms of uh, developing long term strategies that will deal with uh, the Boko Haram insurgency. So that makes it much more. Uh, uh, a threat to uh, to Nigeria, their neighbors, and, and West Africa in general. So it's, it's critical that uh, you know there is a coordinated effort in, in dealing with the issue. But first of all, the, the military should should be able to uh, demonstrate that they are willing uh, to engage in battle. They are willing uh, to fight to defend the national territory of their country and then uh, give uh, hope and confidence to the population that uh, we, you are not left at the mercy of terrorists. Because if you see uh, residents are saying, we are not going to live in this place, we know we are not, no longer safe, we can attack and kill at any time, it shows that uh, you know, there is a lack of confidence in the capacity of the military to provide uh, security for the population. Uh, and uh, if now uh, there is also a lack of coordination uh, from the neighboring countries in terms of how they can develop joint uh, short-term and long-term strategies to deal with the threat, uh, and that, that gives a lead uh, to the uh, Boko Haram uh, uh, terrorist group to uh, develop their strategies and then uh, keep terrorizing the people so that they can uh, have as, as large territories as possible for them to uh, be uh, organizing themselves and, and and then get support from uh, from their like-minded. But, but I, I, I want to believe uh, that to it's not too late. Campaign. So coordination is key. Cooperation is important. I, I want to believe it's not too late to deal with this uh, because several uh, months after the girls were kidnapped, we still haven't found them. Recently we heard of uh, some 85 persons who were freed from the grips of uh, Boko Haram. 
in spite of that, we've seen more attacks in, in very recent times. It's not too late to do that, is it? It's not too late to re-strategize in wanting to deal with our neighbors in for forming a joint committee. No, it's not, it's not too late. Uh, it, it, even though it might be more difficult now uh, to, to, to achieve objectives in terms of you know, developing a coordinator, it's never too late. It is never too late the, you know, to engage them and then make sure that they are not holding any territory. At least uh, that should be a good, a, a good sign that they engage with them in active combat to, to, to reduce their influence and their capabilities. So it, it is never too late. It's always important to, uh, to do uh, analysis about uh, the lapses that occurred in the past and how these have affected peace and security and then develop new strategies using uh, you know, effective intelligence that bring, uh, and then the, the, and, and the, the, the military to make sure that uh, the, the safety of the people who are affected is, is, is guaranteed so that we can cooperate with them in implementing their strategies. I see. We'll leave it here for now. Thank you very much, Alimo. Alimo Diallo is with uh, West Africa Network for Peace Building. Right there, you're watching News Desk. I'll be right back.